Welcome back, people. In the late 90s, there was a disease in the United Kingdom that could have killed over 100,000 people. We know it as the human form of mad cow disease. It's back. Only a few people did catch the human variant. It seems that most people have a genetic protection against this fatal disease. But it has a long incubation period. And right now, 25 years later, people might be showing early symptoms of CJD, the human form of mad cow disease. If they are, it would be devastating. I made a short film about emerging diseases and the terrible things that we have done as humans in abusing animal feed stock and crossing the species barrier. Watch this, learn some lessons, be careful about those sausages you eat out there, and good luck. While stepping off the lunar lander, Neil Armstrong was famously quoted as saying something like, It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Apt words. If we look at how emerging diseases take tiny steps into man, and possibly take giant leaps into mankind. Let me use the classic words of TV Doom. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Very apt, as the world is under threat from new and terrifying emerging diseases. Some of the most recent disease outbreaks have come about because of a breaking down of a barrier that should never be broken. One, flu virus. It popped up in humans after we started domesticating chickens. The influenza pandemic killed 20 to 40 million people worldwide all from a virus that jumped this barrier from birds to humans. It came back in a slightly different form in 1957 and again in 1968 when I caught it as a child. <clears throat> New forms of flu are still emerging as the virus mutates H5 and H9 varieties found recently in Chinese domesticated birds could take that tiny step into man and cause a new pandemic in mankind. Two, filovirus or Ebola. Filovirus is truly terrifying. It has a thread-like microscopic structure. So virulent, whole countries have been quarantined to stop its spread. But where did it come from? Ebola is 88% fatal. If caught by humans, it causes horrible hemorrhaging to your blood vessels. This virus seemed to have leapt into humans from an infected African monkey. But as this virus also quickly kills its animal hosts, this theory is slightly controversial. 3. Human Immunodeficiency Virus We all know this one as HIV or AIDS. Another species crosser. It has infected over 42.9 million people on our planet so far. It most likely jumped from a disease in chimpanzees and one lucky virus found a host in an unlucky human. 4. Hendra and Nipah These stepped from horses into humans in Australia. 
stable workers became ill with a mystery illness in the 1990s with a new disease that only horses catch. The virus is caught by horses in contact with fruit bats. Hendra is also common in cats, dogs and pigs, but suddenly we are living alongside these creatures. Keeping animals in overstocked and unhygienic conditions is bad for them and bad for us. Why is this happening? In my opinion, greed. As we eat more meat and want cheaper and cheaper sources of protein, farmers exploit their animals by reducing their quality of life, leaving them open to animal infectious diseases. But how do we humans catch these new diseases? Imagine wanting to live in a rich city, but you can't afford the house prices. You can visit, but you can't live there. One day, you win the lottery, and out of the blue, you're able to buy a house in the city center. This random chance analogy is pretty good at describing how emerging viruses work. A virus has the ability to mutate. All of them survive by having lots of babies. A viral infection is really only caused by an overwhelming number of them living inside our bodies. One or two is okay, a billion not so good. They live fast and die quickly. Everything that has babies produces mutations or slight differences, often to help them cope with a new environment. One day, a stray animal virus finds its way inside you. Most will die, but a lucky lottery winning virus buys a house and moves in. The way we treat animals and break down barriers between us and them is the key to why we are prone to catch these different diseases. One case in the UK highlights how we knowingly broke the species barrier between animals and humans. The results are terrifying. And it was all this woman's fault. In my humble opinion, she can be blamed for a lot of things, but this is a big one. Cows are vegetarians. They eat grass. Sheep have been bred to produce more wool and have more lambs. But this intensive breeding increased the occurrence of a sheep brain disease. Scrapey. In the mad 1980s, in a fest of deregulation, dead scrapey infected sheep were boiled or rendered down into a nasty liquid protein feed for cows. Farmers really started to add meat from sheep into their cow's diet. Veterinary science knew this was wrong, but monetary greed and a lack of public openness allowed the UK government to allow this to happen. The disease in sheep is caused by a prion, one of the simplest but strangest disease agents out there. Imagine a normal protein. It looks like this. Now imagine exactly the same cell, made of 100% the same stuff, but folded like an origami flower into a different shape. Prions make proteins join together in strange ways. A prion infected brain has holes in the layers of the protein, a bit like a sponge. This slowly causes brain malfunctions and kills the animal. 
for years we have eaten infected sheep. We still do. We are okay because of the species barrier. But when idiots fed the sheep to cows, the cows became ill. And the new disease, BSE or mad cow disease, jumped into our world. What happened next is like a scene from the Andromeda strain. Cows are more closely related to humans than sheep, huh? We ate the cows and we caught the sheep's disease because it had been allowed to jump sheep, cows, humans. The human form of mad cow disease is called CJD. I'm not even going to attempt to tell you what it stands for. 100% fatal, incubation period 25 plus years. Symptoms like a mad cow, truly terrifying. Every UK citizen alive and living in Britain in the 1980s is still not allowed to donate blood. Because we started killing the poor infected cows and all beef exports were stopped, the disease was contained in the UK. But stupidity and greed might have brought back a new prion disease in the USA. Deer are vegetarians, but hunters are adding animal protein to the wild deer food to encourage animal growth to produce larger animals for them to shoot. Guess what? The US wild deer population have a new prion disease called CWD, chronic wasting disease. Whether it will jump into human brains is yet to be seen. So I'm not eating wild venison anymore. All these terrifying emerging diseases have taken an opportunistic first step. But one day a new disease will take a giant leap into our world. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.